All right, guys, after the petrol lounge, I got really interested in those high-end cars, those Porsches, those Lamborghinis, those McLarens. So today I've got a guest, my friend Billy Hawkins, and his Porsche 911T. <laughs> hey, what is up, dude? <laughs> What's up, man? Hey, man, first of all, thank you so much for bringing yeah. your Porsche out. I've seen it once at Coda when we did the uh, big car show, Super Lap Battle, and I got a quick look at it, but I know this is one of your dream cars. 100%. So when we first met, you had a Terminator Cobra. Yeah, 03 Terminator Cobra, black on tan top, uh, 500 to the wheel. Uh, that was like my dream car as a kid. I think a lot of like Ford people are really into those Terminators. Oh yeah. I've had probably every co or every Mustang that you can think of at this point, and uh, that was the one like the goat that I wanted. Uh, had a blast with it, but this kind of realm was always calling to me. The 911's been a dream since really bad boys back in the 90s. So. From all the Mustangs, everyone's got a Mustang story. Oh, yeah to a Porsche, like talk to me, what what made you want this Porsche? Uh, so yeah, me and my wife, man, we have, we have a travel content creation business that we do and it's all based around luxury. And really the Cobra didn't fit into it. So the 911 was really calling for that car culture and uh, it just kept drawing me in. I go to all the car meets in the Cobra and I'd end up going to all the, the Porsche heads and talking to them about their cars. Uh, kind of like you did at Petrol Lounge, right? You kind of just drawn to these really cool <laughs> yeah, cars. Dude. Uh, so I, I've been eyeing the 911 forever, and uh, I was trying to get hands on a GTS, but I refused to pay markup. Uh, so I found the 911T, which a lot of people consider it to be the baby GT3. Uh, the car comes standard with tons of options, uh, more than the base, but not as quite as much as the GT3, especially that nat naturally aspirated engine that it has. Uh, okay, so a, yep. 24 911 Turbo, yeah, right? Yep. 911 Turbo, okay. So yeah, so the 2024, the 992s that came out, I believe it was 2019 to current, uh, they come with twin turbos now. Um, I think all Porsches pretty much come with it, even the new hybrids that are coming out have some variant of a turbo on it. Uh, but this one is just, it pushes just shy of 400 horsepower Whoa. Uh, to the wheel, which doesn't sound like a lot Dude, on that's, paper. Yeah, right, like my Challenger was 400 wheel horsepower. Yeah. It doesn't sound like a lot. No. And so you start, I mean, that thing was a boat, don't get me wrong. <laughs> It's a big one, you monk. <laughs> How much does this weigh, do you know? Uh, so this thing weighs 3,100 and some oh, Yeah, change, dude, 3, pounds. that's a lot. Uh, at the time the 911T came out for uh, Porsche 992s, this is the lightest Porsche you can get. Uh, I think the only one that beats it out right now is the ST, which they run like 300K anyways to get one. Uh, so this is the, uh, the lightest 911 you can get. Uh, the 99T comes with a whole bunch of options uh, over the base Carrera, but one thing it has similar is it also has the base engine, hence why okay. 400 horsepower. But it has all the goodies from the S, the GTS, and the GT3. It's like a hodgepodge of parts to make a really, really fun driver-based car. Gotcha, yeah, I mean, at first glance, I really, again, I'm so new to this. I'm new to Porsche, I'm new to exotics. Um, but at first glance, I really don't know what I'm looking at. Like I can look at a Mustang and be like, oh, it's a pony <laughs> package grill, or it's got GT500 wheels. Like I know the differences, right? So can you point out some of the differences on this car? Yeah, so uh, when you talk to Porsche people, you know, they'll, they'll toss out a lot of weird numbers. You know, you have the 911, but you'll have, you know, the 992s, the 991s. And what that is, it's the code name that Porsche uses for the year base. Uh, and so for the 992, the easiest way to decipher what a 992 is, is straight off the rear end. If you look, all the new Porsches for this year have this nice bar that goes across. Oh, uh, okay. That is the easiest way to identify it. And then the next easiest way is the hips. Yeah, she's thick, yeah. boy. <laughs> the new ones, like back in the day, the turbos always had the wide hips. Ah, uh, okay. Now all the Porsches they're coming out with all have the wide hips, the 911s do at least. Uh, they don't come with this wing. This was aftermarket uh, on my part later on down the road. I just love that old ducktail vibe and have to keep rolling with it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but if you go more to the car, so the 911T, the new 992s, uh, even just the GT3s, yeah, they're a little bigger than the 991s from 2018, 17, uh, but they also have little cues up front that usually only Porsche people really find, uh, I don't know, find really interesting. And they do a lot of throwbacks. It's like Porsche's thing, right? The 911 hasn't changed since it came out in you know, the 60s. But one really cool cue 
is the hood. So when you're looking at the front, if you see that the hood kind of has this drop down, a little step, yeah, that's a homage to the old school Porsches uh, of uh, the day. Yeah, you see, I would have never known that. No. Looking at this car, I, yeah, no clue. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people don't. Um, and it's got a frunk, right? So. Yeah, so that's a frunk. That's a really cool option too. You can swipe. Oh, what? And it works awesome. Watch your mouth. And it works awesome. <laughs> Tons of storage. Oh, like, dude. All right, that's a lot deeper than I expected. That's a lot deeper, right here. Let me see. Brian, hop in. You want me to stand in that? Stand in it. Go, man. I'm a big boy, bro. Dude, I'm I've done it. I've done it. I think you can do it. Come on. Right. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> bro, this is the thumbnail right here. Hey. <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely not fitting in there. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that was unexpected. <laughs> what is, um, okay. Now, at the petrol lounge, I met a, a group of people, and there was a McLaren. Couldn't tell you what the hell it was, yeah. right? And he was tapping on, the door was open, he was tapping on the body, and he was like, you hear that? Carbon, all carbon. I'm like, that's uh, yeah. crazy. Is there anything like that on this car? Yeah, so on these newer uh, 911s, they're all aluminum now. They're not carbon. Uh, you really can't get into a base 911 or really anything below a GT3 without having, uh, you know, not having a ton of carbon uh, without being some crazy price. Uh, cool thing about this car, it is aluminum, so it's a lot lighter. A lot of people don't know that the 911T, uh, what sets it apart, is it's the only car you can actually order it from Porsche with a, a, a seven speed manual. Uh, if not, wow. you gotta start paying more and more to get that manual. What's cool though, uh, this car runs, it's an automatic PDK, which is probably the best transmission ever made in my personal opinion really? in a okay. lot of forums. This one's PDK, it runs zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Holy if cow. I was to go with the manual, uh, it runs, I think it's like 4.5. So there is a huge gap there. Yeah. And for 390 something horsepower, 380 horsepower, this car uses every single inch. When we go driving later, you're gonna feel it. Since the engine's so far in the rear, man it sticks especially on digs and i know like the general thing nowadays is everybody does these rollers on the freeway if you're looking for a roller racer like this ain't it it's fast <laughs> don't get me wrong but this ain't it this, this ain't, ain't what you want no. <laughs> this thing will kill on a dig I, i've wiped the floor with zl1s uh with uh the new m4 like this thing is so fast and if you look at road and track just did the performance car of the year for 2024 uh they had i don't know it was like 20 some cars ferraris lambos the only porsche that they pulled out was the 911t and that's for good reason matt farah ain't gonna choose a car just to choose it that's they right chose the 911t because this is like the ultimate driver's car every horsepower every torque you use it using all of it all of it none of it on reserve yeah so when we go for a drive brian you got to drive it uh you'll feel oh, it oh buddy you'll, you'll you'll hit the corners and everything just sticks just sticks it's a great all-around car all right so cool thing with this car is i mentioned earlier that they use a lot of bits and pieces from the gt3s the gts's what a lot of people don't know is the t actually is the lightest 911 that you can get at the time because they pulled the glass from the GT3 RS. Oh wow! That's in this. So all the uh, back glass, uh, side glass, is all this special. I think it's called uh, Gorilla Glass. I think it's the unofficial term. Yeah. But it's pulled from the GT3 RS. There's no insulation or minimal insulation throughout, and you can opt to have the rear wheel seat removed or the rear seat removed, which I did. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you don't have kids yet, right? No. No. Oh, yeah. Kids. You're party mode. You're good. Probably never ever. You're good. Let's take a look at this inside here. Man, it still smells like a brand new car. And that's an important note because, God, this is really nice. That's an important note because you drove this car across the country. Yeah, I did, uh, just did 6,000 miles. I went from Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Route 66, uh, through California, Utah. I went White Sands, I went, um, uh, the Bonneville, Bonneville Salt Flats, like I had an absolute blast in this car. And uh, one of the big options that I did, it was like 1800 bucks, I thought it was a lot, and I'm so glad I did it, was upgrading the seats. These are some 18-way seats, they hug you. Holy you can, crap. You can contort it like a million other ways. And I gotta say, it was the best investment I've ever made. Uh, this car was so much better driving it on this road trip over my wife's brand new X3 BMW. I got out, I was full of energy, 
Uh, I was not tired. I was excited. I wasn't grumpy at all like you are when you get off road trips. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, like, that was the best investment I ever did, and I just had a blast. Everywhere I went, thumbs up. Um, people come and talk about the car, which is, you know, and I'll use that as a segue. Like, getting into the 911, one thing I didn't expect, and you don't see it on any review ever, is the community that comes with this car. Yes, dude. Uh, I've talked to Brian about this. It's like the people you get to meet, the 911 uh, uh, fandom that's behind these cars, they take you in with welcome arms and you get cool events. We got uh, we got to do early screens of that bad boy movie because I'm a Porsche owner. Right, it's crazy. Uh, I get invited to cool like meets with just Porsches. Like the community is so strong that I feel like it's not talked enough. It's, it's insane. It's the best thing about owning this car. What about the engine bay? Oh, you want to see the engine? I'll show you the engine. Oh God, please don't be. Are you oh. ready? Oh, yeah, that was cool. Bam, here's your engine, guys. What the heck? Is there speakers? I'm joking. Those are fans, right? Yeah. These are to cool off. The what engine. the hell? So, this is, I did a video on this, five things I hate about the car. I love almost everything. But one thing I hate is you're not able to see your, your engine anymore. Wow, that's uh, insane. To, you know, and to get to the engine, you got to pull off the entire rear uh, bumper. And I'm honestly, not that was a huge, huge disappointment. So when I replaced this wing, I had to take everything off and it was really cool to see it. And yeah, yeah, the yeah. exhaust is like my favorite part in this car. It's all windy and tubes, the yeah. fins are great, but this was the big letdown. Yeah, it actually, right when you popped it, it looks, it looks like a Bose sound system from far away. <laughs> 3.0, I wish it would have had like a little turbo badge or something. 3.0 yeah. T maybe, it's a differentiator because I think I saw it. Yeah, 911 Carrera T is what I saw. Okay, oil, <laughs> that's crazy, dude. So you can't change your own it. oil? Uh, no, well you can, it's just a pain. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it, that's all you get to see. It drives me nuts. Bang. But it's still cool. Uh, you know, I, I, I love it. I do get a lot of questions on like what the 911 Carrera T is. A lot of people don't know. The T was a heritage thing from back in, I think it was like the late 60s, early 70s, where they decided to race in the, the Monte Carlo Rally, I believe is what it was, and it destroyed the competition. And the T ended up standing for touring. Mm. So it's designed to be a touring car with a lot of like race history behind it. So and I thought you, that was a little interesting fact. Oh, and you toured it all, right? 6,000 oh, miles. The hell out of it. <laughs> 6, miles. Well, I guess the only thing left to do, man, is let's drive go for it. a drive. Let's do it. Now, just pull down? Yep. Pull down. You're in drive. We're in drive. Porsche people hate this. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Uh, it, it's, it's like a Gillette shaver. <laughs> me, 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 me. Yeah, no. <laughs> so that does get a lot of slack from like the real old school Porsche guys. Uh, but I, 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 I've kind of come to like it. First thing you notice is the hips. Yeah, yeah, dude, she's, she's wide. But you know what's funny is when they designed the car, the hips don't stick out any longer or more than the front. Huh. It's, it's kind of like an optical illusion. So when you go to park it, it really messes with you. So like one of the few options I did on this car is I opted for the parking assist. And that is literally the only driver assist that I have in this car. Bro, this car wants to go. Yeah. I tell like people don't so when Road and Track just did their performance car at Thunder Hill Raceway, this car was chosen over other Porsches like I talked about against Lambos, Ferraris, the new Mustang GTD. Yeah, the Mustang GTD. The Mustang GTD. Yeah, that was one of the options they chose, right? Wow. The, new, the dark horse. No, yeah. no, sorry, sorry, not the GTD. The, the dark horse. The dark the horse. Okay, I'll say the GTD is like yeah, a yeah, race no, no, car. No, yeah. no the, the the dark horse was chosen as an option, and that car is 500 horsepower. Thunder Hill Raceway, it did a 122 and a half. This car with 390, 380 horsepower, uh, pulled a 123. Wow. So like, I don't know, Porsche really figured out how to pull every inch and usable horsepower out of these cars. All right, so I've gone 35 miles an hour and I'm already convinced and understand. It's, it's um, yeah, this is different. It's different, man. I don't this know how is, to put it. Like I, I mean, my channel, I mean, you've known me, everything I've owned yeah. is pretty much American muscle. It's American made. And I love the raw visceralness. Oh, I love it's great big cam v8s are all shaking and everything yeah. this just feels like just a step above this is something, crazy something different man something different so yeah. in sport you can downshift like when you want it to yeah like, downshift right now yeah. here's the pops oh. uh, hit this corner and you know feel it a little bit man Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see, I see what different. you mean. He wants to kick out. Get it, yeah. get it, get it. Go, go, go. You're, you're missing the butt right now. It's great. Yeah, we just slow down. <laughs> what, dude? It takes corners like no other, dude. This Another. corner is slippery. Ask me how I know. Oh, yeah. I'm just the, the debris and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, this 
this thing, this car does have understeer, don't get me wrong, um, especially with gravel like this. It, I think all 911s want to kick out to some extent, um, especially these new 992s. It oh, are real bad right now, yeah, too. Oh my god, it's so bad. Uh, but like, feel it right now, dude. It's not, it's not beating you up. No. The 911T does not beat you up. And that's one of the biggest feedbacks you'll see on any review is like, it's so just good to drive. It is the driver's car. Yeah, this is, it's a comfortable car. Yeah. I'm always very shy or like, I steer away from smaller cars. I know there's a huge following, for example, for like S2000s, Miatas. I drove a yeah. Viper GTS Ooh. and um, I didn't fit. You didn't fit in the GTS? No, I didn't fit. The nice. roof line comes down so low. Oh, yeah. And that I was kind of driving like this and I couldn't sit in the seat and kind of get. Yeah, there, there's room in here for helmets. We're 6'2 we're plus. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, that was yeah. like one of my big my, things. I was like, can I try My it? line of sight is uh, clearer. But yeah, I drove the Viper and I was like, man, I really can't see. And I couldn't see myself driving that car for a long period of time either. Oh, it beats you up. Beats you up. It's like, this car, what I really like about it is if my wife wanted to take this, I'm not going to be a nervous wreck. Cap. <laughs> it's like, it's not scary fast. And you know, even like nowadays as we get older, what, what do you consider fast now? I don't do. My pickup truck was pretty fast at one point. But I mean, like as kids, like if you tell me you had a 13 second car, I'm like, holy cow, that thing is yeah. so fast. Now yeah. I'm like, I, my my realm for fast, like I would say this is quick. Fast nowadays is just, it's the Hellcats and you know, these damn Tesla plaids. It's I know, wild. It's, yeah. Yeah, car technology has, has it, like there was just this giant boom in horsepower wars. Oh. I, I call it the second muscle car era where everybody just started coming out with these banger cars. Ridiculous. Um, it's fun. And, and really, it started to me, and I've said it since the beginning, like when Shelby, when Ford and Shelby dropped the 2013-14 GT500 oh. with 662 horsepower. Game changer. It was like, oh, what? What? Yep. Um, but again, those are, you know, straight axle car, big V8, supercharged. This is, I would take this to the track. There's a track right over there. You know that, right? Yeah, we should go. <laughs> <Harris Hill. laughs> All right, buddy. All right. Break. So it's. Brake, gas, push button, and then dump Brake. when you're ready. Wait, push button first, right? Yeah, if you want. And then, all right, here we go. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> oh, my! It's, oh, my it's, God! It's, it's, how is that 400 horsepower, right? Oh, my God! Did you hear any, any wheel spin? Oh, no, dude. It just gripped it. It's so fun, dude. So fucking fun. So, I, I, oh. I love this car. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm geeking. <laughs> cool. Oh my god, dude, I'm geeking right now. <laughs> we should have started with that. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. That's the first uh, one I've been the passenger seat, too. You're the first person to launch it other than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, dude, I got chills, man. Uh, oh, dude. It hooks, man. I don't know how Porsche does this. It's insane. Golly. Alright, so put it back in sport mode so you don't lose the rear end there we go oh it's almost the rear end now uh, i mean if we take this coin you can take this doing like 40 50. no nah, we're good uh i'm all about driving i like driving the hell of the car man but isn't that it was just like instant go Ooh. like you didn't feel My like eyes watered up bro that was it's just stupid stupid that was that was so good that was way too what am i doing yeah like imagine being in a turbo s that's doing it in 2.8 seconds i believe the turbo s does it man isn't that just Porsche is on a different level with everything. It's just that yeah, downshift and hit it. Go 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 go. Oh yeah. It sticks. It's planted. It's very very planted. You'll notice the only time it wants to step out is real early on in the corner. But it's, if you can feather it, not like gun it all the way through yeah. the corner, you can really get some speed. It, uh, that's... That all oh, the the rear wheel steer. So good. So good. Yeah. Dude, I should start autocrossing in this. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> well, so you know what's funny, dude? I saw that there's a huge push right now for like Porsche drifting. Dude, Chelsea, which makes sense. Chelsea Denofa, yep. uh, you know, he built his his drift Porsche. He's been talking about this for a while, but it's good, dude. It's good. He's got a really good video interviewing by um, Hurt about the build and everything, and he goes real in depth with it. Yeah, it's it's so like if you took off all the traction control, like you can feel it wants a step. Yeah. Like imagine these cars with more horsepower and what you could do drifting, like, holy cow. It'd yeah. be insane. Dominate. Yeah, this is really good, man. 
I can't even begin to express the gratitude for you letting me yeah, dude. experience a Porsche. Especially after the meet I just went to. It's kind of one of those things that's like, you know, don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was Mustang, go, 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 American, go. You know, we're both, you know, part yeah. of the military. Like, I'm all about supporting American stuff. But as soon as I was stationed in Germany and I got my first Beamer, I was like, holy cow, there's, there's something to this. Yeah, there's something to and this. And then I moved up into this, this Porsche finally, and I'm like, what have I been missing? Why didn't I buy this or try to buy one of these earlier? Like, if you're on the, you know, the fence about buying a, a used 911 or whatever, buy it, buy it, buy it. I don't care if it's a, a 996, which is the one that's like, has the ugly headlights. Uh, just buy one because what it's gonna do, it opens up doors to friends, new communities, yep. events, and it just, the overall driving experience is so different, so different. Yeah, so different, this is freaking, and what's, okay, so, if you don't mind, how much did you pay for this one? Uh, so, at the time, you could get these, like, just nothing on it, I wanna say it was like 118,000. Um, now I wanna say they bumped up to like 125K to get into a 911T. Uh, the way this one's optioned, which I didn't really go, all out um but i did do a, a few key things uh it came out to 138 before taxes and you know what's crazy that's trx territory is it really uh msrp oh, is 120 125 i believe like right at 130 uh, especially for this final last call year and i mean i get it if you're a big mopar guy or you understand these trucks msrp started at 80 and they've gone from 80 to 120 130 and nothing really has changed except for like carbon fiber interior and alcantara uh, so people are pissed like inherently nothing has changed on the truck except colors and some carbon fiber in the dash and door panels See, I mean, but I think, you know I think, but somebody buying a trx like bro buy a porsche yeah right? <laughs> buy a porsche if you're, if you're a big sports car guy like i yeah. definitely start looking at porsche especially 911s but okay so if talking about the trx and how it barely changed who's been who established that what car brand did that porsche like the 911 has not you know inherently changed mm. all that much since it came out you know, the creator, so the creator of Porsche, Dr. Porsche, Ferry Porsche, is his son. Like, they've kept this idea of just doing the 911 and not changing anything over, you know, crazy drastic. Yeah. Look at the Mustang. The Mustang, the Fox body to, you know, what, what was the, the next, you know, the 90s? I've got the S, whatever. That How says. can I help you? Whoa. Whoa. You can't help me. You know, that's funny. I've seen that in other reviews. <laughs> she just starts stalking? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Keep talking to me, baby. But it's like, you, they drastically changed the Mustang over the years, and sometimes you lose customers, sometimes you don't. Yeah, but yeah. Shit, Porsche's been doing it like this forever. Yeah, they definitely crushed it. They only had like, they only had one miss, and that's when they changed the damn headlights on. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard, yeah. Yeah, the 2006s, like. Well, let's go ahead and uh, let's wind this baby home before yeah, I just, uh, before I just put it in my driveway. <laughs> All right, dude. It's windy today. Heck yeah. It's windy. Listen, thank you so much for showing me your Porsche. That's the way I'm ready to say it. Porsche, not Porsche. Yeah, Porsche, not Porsche. Thank you for letting me drive it, experience what it's like behind the wheel of one of these cars. Yeah. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, yeah, dude. Yeah, bro. Hey, man. Thanks for having me out. Like, I love your channel. I love everything. So if you're new here, go subscribe. All that good stuff. <laughs> uh, super big fan, so I appreciate having my car on it. Uh, do you want to talk about what's in the... In the future for you, we've talked about Mustang past. This is the present. What's in the future? The future, man. Uh, the future right now, I, I definitely think it's the Cobb Tune. I think that'll probably happen the next month or so. Uh, other than that, I'm looking at an exhaust. I don't know what I want. I'll probably just do a slip on it first because it's still underneath warranty. A lot of cool stuff you can do with the cats, taking them off, doing high performance cats on this and pulling a ton of horse. Um, so I think that's like, I think my, my next realm. One day I might want to lower it a little bit. These cars come a little lower uh, than stock and standards, uh, but I wouldn't mind taking off about an inch or so. Nice, dude. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Uh, guys, go ahead and follow Billy Hawkins so you can see his updates or any more road trips he goes on in his Porsche. Until next time, guys, peace out.